Hello everyone, today we'll be learning about the development of the atomic model. Now first came Dalton. Now it is important to know the chronological order and first it was Dalton's atomic theory. He proposed that the at atoms are the smallest units of matter. In other words, all matter was made up of atoms. And he said that atoms, atoms cannot be destroyed and that it makes up all matter and compounds are a result of two or more elements. So these were his three or four pro proposals, while these three here are quite important. And with Dalton, you should just summarize it and make sure that you put all of this in, in your answer for Dalton. Now with this topic, I would like you to make little summaries for each different scientist we're gonna learn about. And also make sure it's in chronological order so you don't get mixed up. So our first one was Dalton, very primitive ideas. The atoms are smallest units of matter. They cannot be destroyed. Atoms make up all matter and that com compounds are a result of two or more elements. Next came J.J. Thomson, and his atomic model said that a cathode ray particle was one to one thousandth of a hydrogen. Now a hydrogen atom, it contains a proton and an electron and cathode ray particles. Now with J.J. Thomson, he worked with cathode ray particles. What cathode ray particles are, they're only electrons. So an electron will be a thousandth of an atom. He proposed the idea of subatomic particles. Subatomic particles are particles inside the atom. So for example, protons, neutrons, and electrons, they are the subatomic particles. And atoms were constituents of charged particles. Now just looking back, what are charged particles? They have a charge in them, either positive or negative. Now we know protons are pro positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. While neutrons, they have no charge. So the fact that atoms have charged particles in them is that they have protons and new, uh, electrons in them, which are positive and negatively charged. And his theory or his atomic model was known as a plum pudding model. Now, that is because he said that the atom was a round figure like that and that it was positively charged. Now this positively charged atom had electrons to neutralize it, embedded on it, just like plums in a pudding. That's why it's called a plum pudding, and this is how his atomic model looked like. You may be asked to draw this up, and just as a memory thing, plum pudding has to have a positive atom with charged particles as electrons, just like plums in a pudding. Just remember that. So you can simply summarize this as J.J. Thompson, he was the one with the subatomic particles and the plum pudding model. Now comes Rutherford and alpha scattering. Now alpha scattering is a process he used to come up with his proposal. What he did was he aimed alpha particles at gold foil and these were detected. Now ideally when, det when you're detecting these alpha particles you should be able to detect all of them. But funnily enough, some of them were deflected like as you can see there. Now what happened there was that when the alpha particles hit the nucleus, they were deflected. Now to know what alpha particles are, alpha particles are hel helium nuclei. That is the helium nucleus. Now helium is He. In helium nucleus, you would know that it has two protons and two neutrons. So these, that's a four, a mass of four, quite heavy. Now when a gold, a gold nucleus, there you go, that's a nucleus, when alpha particle were shot through the new, um, gold foil, they were deflected at some points, as you can see here. And this green dot here is a nucleus of the atom. And a nucleus of the atom must have been quite heavy and also positively charged to repel these alpha particles. Because alpha particles, they have two protons and two neutrons. That means it's positively charged because it doesn't have any electrons to neutralize it. 
which means that like charges deflect. In other words, they repel one another. That's why you can see the deflection here. So he proposed that some of the particles were deflected by the heavier nucleus in the middle of the atom. Rutherford was able to conclude that all mass and positive charge was concentrated in the middle of the atom. So positive charge and mass were all concentrated here. In other words, what he meant was, he said that all the protons and the neutrons were in this little nucleus here, while the electrons orbited it. Now he wasn't very sure about the electrons yet, so with Rutherford, he was the one who used alpha scattering as his process, and that he was able to scatter them and conclude that all the mass and the positive charge were concentrated in the middle of the atom or the center of the atom. If you can remember what we just learned, we learned Dalton, Thomson, and Rutherford. Now let's move on. We have Bohr. Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom. So he mainly focused on the hydrogen atom because it was quite simple and it didn't have any neutrons. He was able to work with it much more efficiently. And he worked at a greater scale where he used quantum physics as well to come up with his theories. All electrons orbited the nucleus in certain energy levels. Now with Bohr, he used, say, he used Rutherford's model of the atom, but what he did was he focused mainly on the electrons that Rutherford was not able to describe. And he said that nucleus of the atom, uh, the electrons would orbit the nucleus in certain energy levels. So for example, this electron here would only orbit this energy level and it would not move to the other energy level. Atoms do not radiate energy in stationary states. Now this is purely to do with quantum physics, but it is also a fact when atoms are in one energy level, they are not radiating any energy. That's something to memorize. And just sum, summing up what we learned, we learned four different theories of the atom. The first one was Dalton, and he was very primitive with his ideas. He said that atoms were the smallest units of matter, that all matter was made up of um, atoms, and that atoms cannot be broken up. And then came J.J. Thomson. J.J. Thomson was the one with the plum pudding model. He said that atoms had subatomic particles within them. Then came Rutherford. Now Rutherford was able to say that all the mass and the charge was concentrated in the center of the atom. Later came Bohr where he was able to explain our electrons. With the electrons, he said that they orbited in certain energy levels. Just looking at some questions here, we have question 6 which is a multiple choice question. Which of the following correctly describes Rutherford's atomic model? We have four options. Now, if you just remember to Rutherford's atomic model, he said that all the matter, or all the mass and the charge, positive charge, were concentrated in the middle of the atom. So which one of these says that? We have A that says that positive charge particles and electrons were evenly distributed. That was not his proposal, that was J.J. Thomson's proposal, and that was the plum pudding model. So A is not the answer. C says, atoms consist of a nucleus and electrons orbiting around the nucleus at a finite energy level. This was much more advanced than Rutherford, and this came from Bohr's propo proposal. So this was a Bohr's um, energy level, and he was not able to explain this, in fact. So C is incorrect. D, atoms are the smallest particles of matter. This is the most primitive idea of atoms, and this came from Dalton. So this is not the answer. B, atoms consist of a small but heavy nucleus and electrons, which are distributed around the nucleus. Now this, in fact, is a correct answer because he said all mass and positive charge was concentrated in the center of the atom. So B is the answer there. 7. What is the significance of Thomson's atomic model? 
Now, if you look back to Thompson, what was he doing? He had the plum pudding model. He said that there were subatomic particles present. So looking through the options, we have B, it describes the existence of a nucleus. Now that's not true because he did not say there was a nucleus. He said there was a positive charged atom and there was electrons embedded on it. So C, B is incorrect. C, it described electron movement in quantum mechanical aspect. Now this was purely Bohr's idea, so this was not the answer. D, it described positively charged particles in atoms. He did not actually say there were positively charged particles. He said there were negatively charged electrons, but he said that the atom in whole was positively charged. So D is incorrect. A, it postulated the existen existence of subatomic particles. That's very true because he said that elect electrons were posit uh, negative and they were present in this positively charged atom. So A is the answer. Now moving to 8, what is the significance of Bohr's atom atomic model? Again we have four options. Now with the options, if you remember what Bohr did, he worked with quantum physics and he was able to define the electron's orbit around the nucleus. So is it A? No, because A was Thomson's postulate where he um, postulated the existence of subatomic sub particles. So A is incorrect. Then we have B, the existence of the nucleus. That was more Rutherford. D, it described positively charged particles in atoms. That was not true because positively charged particles were mainly done by Rutherford. C, it described electron movement in quantum mechanical aspects. Now that is in fact correct because he was able to say how electrons mo moved in certain energy levels and how they did not radiate energy when they're within that certain energy level. So C is a correct answer. Question 9. The following diagram shows the structure of an atom of boron. If you look at your periodic table, you'll be able to find boron. Add a key to the diagram to identify the three particles of the atom. Now we have three different particles here. We have the one with the minus sign outside the nucleus. We have a positive one with a positive sign inside the nucleus. And we also have a green particle. The negative one is the electron, as you can see, because they're negatively charged. They orbit the nucleus. So what should be the positive one? The positive one is a proton and the neutron is a green because it's inside the nucleus along with the positively charged protons. So that's question 9. Question 10. Describe Bohr's model of the atom. Now, If you remember back what was Bohr's model, his main concept was the electron movement around a certain energy level and how it did not radiate energy when it's in that certain energy level. So you would go about describing it like this. The small central nucleus is made up of a positively charged proton and neutral neutrons. Negatively charged electrons would orbit the nucleus in shells or energy levels. There are two electrons in the first shell and eight in the second shell. And it increases like that, but this, there is an exception for transition metals. Now this brings us to the end of the lesson. We, we did um, look at four different scientists. First came Dalton, then came J.J. Thomson, Rutherford, and lastly we looked at Bohr. And we looked at how they developed the atomic model and how they enhanced one another's theories and came up with the most recent one, which is the Bohr's model of the atom. Mm -hmm.